Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this time and clocks video, I'll be discussing pendulum clock, quartz clock and atomic clock, international atomic time, coordinated universal time and what is a leap second. So let's get started. Time is money, clock is ticking and many more sayings reflect the importance of time and clocks in our daily life. Time and clocks are very important for computers and other devices as well. And every computer works based on the time to define the order of operations and various metrics. Our regular clocks are set to the mean solar time to measure the length of a mean solar day that is 24 hours. Each clock needs a resonator or oscillator that is used to generate the clock signal and determines its accuracy. Several types of resonators or oscillators were developed and used in different clocks to measure time accurately. Here we are going to look at the working and oscillating element of three different clocks, pendulum clock, quartz clock and atomic clock. Olden days pendulum clock or grandfather clock employed a pendulum to regulate the speed of gears in the clock and gears count the number of seconds by counting its oscillations. The pendulum is a harmonic oscillator which swings backwards and forwards in a precise time interval dependent on its length. And the time interval for each complete oscillation is constant that is normally 2 seconds or 1 swing per second. A quartz clock is the most commonly used clock which uses a tiny quartz crystal cut out in the shape of a tuning fork as the oscillator. Quartz naturally vibrates at almost precise frequency of 32,768 times per second and also has piezoelectric property meaning that when pressure is exerted upon it, it produces electrical energy or inversely when an electrical current is passed through quartz, it vibrates at the same frequency. It provides good accuracy and is still much better than even the best mechanical clocks. However, it is affected by several factors such as environment, aging and manufacturer's specification of nominal frequency and error boundaries. An atomic clock is the most accurate clock which uses the oscillation frequency of atoms to measure time. The basic concept is that all atoms of a given element oscillate at exactly the same rate or frequency. Atoms of specific elements such as cesium, rubidium and hydrogen are used in atomic clocks for different requirements. However, cesium atoms are widely used in atomic clocks and for deriving the standard definition of one second. Let's look at the working of a cesium clock in which a gas of cesium atoms is introduced into the clock's vacuum chamber and lasers gently push atoms together into a ball. Then, two vertical lasers are used to gently toss the ball upward. Under the influence of gravity, the ball then falls down through the microwave cavity. During this up and down trip, the atomic state of the atoms might or might not be altered as they interact with the microwave signal. Later, another laser is pointed at the atoms. Those atoms whose atomic state were altered by the microwave signal emit light or fluorescence. This process is repeated many times while the microwave signal in the cavity is tuned to different frequencies. Eventually, a microwave frequency is found that alters the states of most of the cesium atoms and maximizes their fluorescence. This frequency is the natural oscillation frequency of the cesium atom and is used to define the SI unit of time that is one second. So, one second is the time taken by a cesium atom at the ground state to oscillate exactly 9,192,631,770 times. We have discussed various types of clocks. Now let's talk about standard time and time scale. With the advent of highly accurate atomic clocks, scientists recognize the need of a standard procedure 
of timekeeping using these clocks. So, International Atomic Time or TAI is an international time scale based on atomic clocks. It uses the combined output of a few hundred highly precise atomic clocks located around the world, thus providing the exact speed at which our clocks tick. The International Bureau of Weights and Measures or BIPM is responsible to determine and manage international atomic time. It is one of the main components of Coordinated Universal Time or UTC. Now we discuss another time scale which we use for all our clocks that is the Coordinated Universal Time or UTC. So UTC is based on TAI but it is adjusted by leap seconds to account for the difference between the definition of second and the rotation of the earth. We will explain leap second just after the UTC. UTC is the international reference time scale that is used to determine local times around the world. Prior to 1972, the standard time scale was Greenwich Mean Time or GMT which was replaced by the UTC. The International Bureau of Weights and Measures or BIPM is responsible to determine and manage the UTC. The switch to daylight saving time or DST does not affect the UTC means it is not adjusted to reflect changes either to or from daylight saving time. Now we know that atomic clocks are extremely accurate and measure the length of a mean solar day that is 24 hours. But there is an issue with this accurate measurement of time as it does not accurately reflect the length of a solar day on the earth. Now the question is why? So the speed at which our earth rotates around its axis fluctuates daily. Sometimes the earth rotates a bit faster, sometimes a bit slower. Consequently, most solar days are a little longer or shorter than 24 hours by a fraction of a second. The earth's rotation speed actually fluctuates daily due to various factors such as the tidal effects of the moon, earthquakes and melting ice sheets that can cause a change of a fraction of a second in the amount of time it takes the earth to rotate on its axis. Therefore, the mean solar day measured by atomic clocks needs to be synchronized with the actual solar day. When their difference becomes one second, then this second is adjusted to clocks to synchronize with the earth's rotation which is called a leap second. For example, if the earth is rotating at a slower speed, then solar days are slightly longer than 24 hours by a fraction of a second. If a large number of solar days are longer than 24 hours for a period of time, that is sufficient enough to become the overall difference of one second, then this requires the synchronization of clocks by adding an extra second to our clocks which is called a positive leap second. However, if the earth is rotating at a faster speed, then solar days are slightly shorter than 24 hours by a fraction of a second. If a large number of solar days are shorter than 24 hours for a period of time, that is sufficient enough to become the overall difference of one second, then this also requires the synchronization of clocks by subtracting an extra second to our clocks which is called a negative leap second. Therefore, leap seconds can be positive or negative. A leap second is adjusted to our clocks on either June 30th or December 31st if required. And the International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service announces the next leap second. At the time of making this video, 27 positive leap seconds were added to our clocks since the beginning of this leap second in 1972. However, 10 more leap seconds were added at the beginning in 1972. Therefore, total 37 leap seconds have been added so far and they have all been positive. Finally, there have been some problems with every normal leap second insertion and there is an ongoing debate about eliminating the practice of inserting leap seconds. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.